my awesome thing is something that just actually happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been decades in the making as, as a movie. It's decades in the making. Uh, but it finally reached where it wanted to go, where they wanted to put it yesterday. And that is the James Webb Space Telescope. Ooh. There were 400 individual times of failure. Oh, jeez. From, from launch to now. 400 individual times that if this thing broke, it's a space, it's space junk. If this thing broke, space junk. This thing, space junk. And it worked flawlessly. They were shooting for, I want to say, they said... If we're if everything works as nominal, mm -hmm. ten years, this thing works so perfectly they have twenty years worth of fuel. So, from launch to unfolding the mirrors, to unfolding the heat shield, to doing the different things to get it to the Lagrange, the what they call the L two point, the Lagrange, the second Lagrange point. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what's special about that is it's approximately, I think it's, um, was it uh, 1.5 million miles from Earth? Approximate? Not one mil, I'm sorry, sorry, it's around 1 million miles, 1 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. So if you uh, look at the uh, webpage, it actually shows you Earth, Moon, and then way out, if you uh, see if uh if you can scroll up a little bit oh oh, right oh that's a timeline there okay yeah so uh let's see here if you type if you click where it says distance uh on the timeline on the far right distance complete or on the timeline uh, no itself? no oh, um if you look at the there time yeah there okay yeah Ooh, the moon just moves. because it, it well the thing is it, it, it moves quicker closer to earth and it slows down so but you can see there's Earth, Moon, and then you can see how far out that is from the Moon. You know, it's three times worth. It's a, and the the L two, the Lagrange two, uh, orbit is a stable orbit. Mm -hmm. So it basically orbits around that part. So you kind of have Earth here, Moon here, and this thing kind of just orbits like this, pointed away from the Earth, because it's infrared. It has to be very far away. Uh, it has an, um, the heat shield. And the nice thing about that website, those are real, th those aren't expected um, points or estimated points. Those are actual data points from the satellite or from the telescope. So you can see like the one side is minus 300 degrees and the warm side, yeah, you look on the far right there. The cold side's minus three to four, uh, 330 to 350 degrees. The hot side, the side actually facing the Earth and the sun, is between 55 and 129 degrees Fahrenheit. And this, since this thing is an infrared telescope, if there's any heat that leaks from one side to the other, that'll overwhelm the signals they're looking at. Mm. Because they're looking for just the barest, the you know the, the 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 barest of heat signatures to look at the farthest away scar stars as possible. Jeez. And being that far out, unlike Hubble, which was which is in low Earth orbit, where you could at the time send up, you know, because of the uh, very minute issue, very I mean beyond minute issue with the Hubble's telescope, they could send up an astronaut to move things around and flick things in and out. This thing, you know, it's out so far, there's no fixing it. You're, you're out there, you had to launch it and just let it go do its thing. Mm. And you figure with all the launch, it's just kind of mind-blowing that you're, it just worked perfectly. Everything worked perfectly. Nice. Which is just so, so great. And the, now, they're going to take... Everything's deployed, but it's going to be another six months or so for everything to cool down and to, for them to start to um, focus the, the individual AT mirrors, which are around four feet apart, which move as around, a, I think it's, I think remember, a tenth of the width of a human hair at a time Jeez. that they can position all these mirrors independently. 
So they have to get all those and then they will start to do things and they'll calibrate it. And then the images are coming in second half of the year. Well, you have to, because I mean, you look at what they're looking at. I, I just saw, I can't remember if it was uh, related to this, but it was some sort of astrophysicist or something that was like, hi, you see this like black spot here in between this cluster of stars here? Mm -hmm. Well, and you zoom in and you can see the star, like see the, see the light from there, right? And they're like, listen, each one of these, it's taken longer than there's been humans for us to reach us to be seen. Mm -hmm. Each one of them like represents, I don't know how many clusters of stars. You know, it was like this big mind blowing thing about the, you know, size of the universe uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing to make you, you know, feel absolutely insignificant. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I will say individually, yes, but the fact that, you know, humans, there, there's, there, there's, there, this isn't magic. These are humans working their, okay, I don't think this is too, too hard on the show, working their ass off mm -hmm. for decades, scientists, engineers, working with the launch people, um, orbital mechanics is nasty. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually, when I was in school, I remember doing it. Orbital mechanics is nasty. Designing something to survive the launch and the heat and the cold and in a little confined space that has to unwrap itself on its own. All that is incredibly, it's like, you can't say, you know, like the aliens, these are people. Mm -hmm. These are really, you know, intelligent, driven people who work well in teams and a worldwide team because it was actually launched by French rocket, even though it's a U.S. Um, satellite, U.S. Telescope was launched by French, the Adrian 5, I think it was called, the, but it was a French rocket that launched it because when this was originally done, SpaceX hadn't launched anything yet. We didn't have anything home built that could launch it. So we had to use the French rocket to launch it because nothing was, there was nothing there. It was that long ago when they had to start designing this. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the thing I think you're talking about was the Hubble. Uh, the deep space image where on a whim, for, for lack of a better term, they said, there's a little postage size spot in the sky. We can't see anything. Right now with our current telescopes, it looks completely black. It looks like there's nothing in there. Let's use Hubble to take a photo. And it was like, it's completely filled with stars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Turns out. Yeah. So yeah, it, it just just the, and again how perfectly everything worked, how you know people were like, oh it's delayed again, oh it's delayed again. Well, it's delayed because you have one shot. Mm -hmm. You know this isn't, well you know if it doesn't work, this is beta test. We can fix. No, we can't. <laughs> yeah, you you can't just deal with a blown up one of these. It's ten years of work, no. right? Like like, no. like SpaceX says, it's a different it's a different thing. But also, like no. I don't know that SpaceX would have been able to make something like this, right? Uh, you know, it's a different um, yeah. And that's because uh, I I think both methods have their advantages. SpaceX is a very <laughs> We're gonna go and break things and go, and and everything, and and you know NASA and, and those that have worked with NASA are very like we are going to do every calculation to make sure this yeah. is right before we even try it, you know, yeah. which which adds a lot of time. I mean, mm -hmm. frankly, it's a lot of time, and you know, I, I, and that's and that's fine, you know, that's 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 science, yeah. <laughs> that's science. I mean, there are certain things that, yeah, you can do quick and easy and cheap. And if it busts, no problem. You have an extra copy in the back you can throw up there. Uh, for this, you you don't. And uh, for NASA versus SpaceX, is and remember, NASA is a government agency. If something busts there, mm -hmm. you know, for, forget about people dying. If something busts that's a big, you know, high profile event, you got congressional hearings. Mm-hmm. And you got congressmen going up there doing their, well, sir, I even know I, I'm going to make, I'm going to talk in front of you for the next five minutes and use big words because that's what I like to do as a congressman. And you're like, yeah, we don't want that. Mm -mm. We want to be able to do our job. We want to be able to, you know, it's, it's, I truly believe most people, most people on their job, but especially people at NASA are like, we want to do cool things. We went through all this school. We learned all this stuff to do cool things like telescopes like this 
And can you just let us do our cool things without looking <laughs> over our shoulder when you have no idea what you're talking about? And mm-hmm. that's why when things like this happen, they get, people, you see the control room gets so excited and there's so overwhelming joy. And it's so wonderful to see. The super, ge- super geekiness. I love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. So, well, we'll keep an eye out for that. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of interesting things. I mean, look at what we've got now, the Hubble over the last how many years? Um, a couple of decades at least, right? And, uh, you know, it, yeah, this is, I mean, it, it's an ongoing exploration. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that in our lifetimes at least. So, uh, anyways, you know what? All that space and I bet they don't got any pizzas because what we got over here in, in Beachview. New York City 